Hello, fellow humans. It's been a very busy start to the week, but in a lot of good ways. Um, the last video I posted about me getting ready to go to the party, the party was great. I had a really fun time. I got to have one of my whips used on me for the first time, which A+, plus. it worked great. And it really inspired me even more to continue making them and continue to make them better. And so I've got a few things I'm working on right now. Uh, for example, I'm almost done with this kind of 50-50 beautiful pink and black uh, three foot snake whip here. Uh, the only thing I have left to do is actually um, finish wrapping and tying the heel knot. Everything else is totally done. And as far as quality, this one is a lot better. And it's for a few reasons. Um, the primary reason, and I can show you because I have another one in progress, but I have evolved past the electrical tape. I was doing it more out of uh, necessity before because I was still kind of learning but I'm getting better. And so on this one, the bellies are wrapped with artificial sinew around, which looks like this. So this is another whip I just started. Uh, this is just the core and the first belly. And you can see here, it's just entirely been wrapped um, where the belly stops and even a little bit further down onto the core with artificial sinew. And the advantage of this is that it doesn't have that weird kink in the whip where the uh, paracord ends because my first whip is definitely the worst. It has this awful kink where you can see where the, um, the last belly stops and the final, because these final wraps are just the core um, and even this one, it's not, it, it's pretty good. You can see there's no huge kink in it. It does roll very nice. But the, so not only like it, there's less kinks in the whip, but it also just, it flows a lot easier. Uh, it rolls really well. And it makes it crack a lot easier too. So I'm really happy that the quality of my construction is going up. And so this one, all I've got left is to tile the heel knot. Uh, the one I just showed you has the first belly finished, so I still have to do the second belly and then the overlay. And I've got another just core sitting right here, ready to go. I actually had my boyfriend help me. I think he probably did this one and I did the other one. Kind of hard to tell because it's the exact same thing. This is just the shot loaded core. I have a couple new colors I'm looking forward to playing with. Um, I thought it'd be really cute to do like a pastel inspired whip. So I got some of this, I don't know how well you can see it in the package, so maybe we'll just take it out. I got this pastel kind of candy pink color. I did honestly think it was going to be a little bit lighter uh, when I saw it online, but it's this be against me you can kind of see it's like a peachy sort of pastel pinkish color and I wanted to use that in combination with this really cute kind of lavender color I just thought these uh, kind of side by side in the same pattern as this black and pink might make like a really cute kind of pastel girly whip uh, so I'm excited for these. Maybe if I like dim the lights here for a second, the color will show up a little bit better. Kinda. You'll, you'll see the, the finished product in the end of naturally. So I'm excited to have some new paracord colors to play with. I'm excited that the quality has gone up. And I've also got a couple other little projects going on at the moment. Um, we just went out to the leather store, which we haven't been to since October. And the last time we went was the first time we went back in October. Uh, we drove out because it's a good hour away from here. So it's not someplace we go particularly often. But um, Matt and I went down to the leather store because I needed more artificial sinew to finish these whips so I can have them for sale this Saturday. Well, while we were talking about going to the leather store, I mentioned the fact that I'd really been interested in making my own dragon tail because I really enjoy dragon tail whips. Um, 
I really like the sensation of them. I think they're cool. We were looking at them when we were at Bound in Boston, but they're really expensive. And we just didn't feel like it at the time. But then when I was like, you know, theoretically, it wouldn't be that hard to just make one. So we totally bought the supplies to make one. Although we probably have enough to actually make two. We got this super, super nice... Um, let me grab it so I can show you. This nice black deer skin. And we both really liked it because it's, it's very supple, soft leather, but it has a nice weight to it as well. And I just think that this rolled up is going to make for a really nice dragon tail. I love the way leather smells. So I'm excited for that. Uh, we just need to get the handle and that's going to be a fun couples project for us. See if we can make two dragon tails and then I don't know if we'll keep both, sell one. We'll see what happens with that. And then we also grabbed a couple of uh, veg tan bellies because they were not very expensive. And it's like a lot of leather for the amount of money that it was. But it's this nice, thick, thick leather. And I wasn't even entirely sure what I wanted to make out of it when we were buying it. But then Matt suggested, yeah, you can totally make a leather paddle. I was like, oh my gosh, I can make a leather paddle. That's a fantastic idea especially where the little bit of leather carving experience I do have, um, I'm pretty good at it. And if you're not familiar, leather carving is when you do kind of like the hand embossed designs in the leather. Uh, maybe I'll show you some of that next time. Well, I, I have um, some samples somewhere. Gosh, I don't even know where they are. I have one that I keep in my car, so maybe I'll try to remember to bring that inside. Uh, but maybe a nice like leather carved paddle would be fun. And I'm excited. I'm excited to have some more crafts going on. I'm really excited to get to this weekend so I can do a little bit of vending with the whips because I've got, I just have like a pile of whips on the chair. I've got the yellow and black, the blue and black, this pink and black will be done. And then I wanna have at least one of the pastels so that's at least four whips and then maybe I can sneak a fifth one in there and have like a decent selection. I also did get some steel rod to try making my first bull whip. So I don't know if I want to try and get that done before this weekend or just hold off on that because at this point I feel very comfortable making the snake whips. I haven't actually tried a full bull whip yet and I feel like the bull whip I want to be at least five, six, seven feet so I might just hold off on that and focus on the three foot snake whips right now because um they're just really fun to use and especially um last Saturday when I went to the play party and we actually used the whip in its full form it was just it's very space friendly I wasn't worried about impeding and on other people's space like it's just a nice the three feet is just a really nice length to because a lot of a lot of play parties if you've never been to one and first off what's a play party is a bdsm event where people are doing bdsm activities and a lot of times there'll be restrictions on things like no implements longer than three feet because like if you're swinging a five foot whip around you're gonna hit people behind you and so a lot of spaces will ban things like that because it just takes up too much space realistically and so that's kind of where these little three foot snake whips come in is that it's only three feet. So it doesn't take up that much space to effectively use this whip. And it's just a lot easier to use indoors, both just at home or at events like that. So I just really have fallen in love with these things. Um, the fact that they're fast to make because they're small is just kind of an added bonus. That's not specifically why I enjoy making them. I enjoy making them for all the previous re uh, reasons I already listed. And it just went so well. And I had all these people asking me about it. And they were like, because after our scene, people want to talk because like, it's not something you see every day. It's a pretty niche kink. Um, oh, remember, I told you I was going to show you the, the crappy whip. I remembered it. Hold on, I'll grab it. I stopped by the house to grab my mirror because I haven't had a mirror. Okay, so this is the whip that I bought at the sex store for about 
not about. It was exactly thirty dollars. I remember. Definitely faux leather. It is. It is like a bullwhip. There's something solid in here. I don't know what. Probably. Probably a wooden dowel by the feels of it. And it's kind of got this cute like studded handle, which is actually kind of uncomfortable to hold. And then, yeah, that's, that is some very unsolid construction there. And just this weird giant plate. And it ends with this thing. I don't even really know what that's supposed to be. And then this. So I can understand the appeal because like, Sensation-wise, this bigger knot is going to have a very different feel than these tiny crackers on the whips I've been making. And I have considered um, the advantages and disadvantages of that, because the thing about this play whip is there's no way this thing's ever going to crack. Like, it's physically impossible. It's just a very shoddy whip. Like, this thing just... Yeah, no. Versus this one is really a, a, it's a beast to behold. And I have now been on the receiving end of it and not just like lightly, like actually cracked on me. And there was, there was blood. So it's, you know, not a toy. This is definitely a toy. Like you hit someone in the eye and you're going to hurt them as I almost, you know, whap myself right in the eye here. But it's not nearly as powerful as these real whips. So it's kind of, I just thought it'd be a fun, fun thing to show you. I've had this thing for quite a while now, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it, to be frank. Maybe I'll just give it to somebody. I don't know. It's just, it's very weird, very sad whip, and it's just... It's like looking back at old outfits you used to wear in high school and being like, I can't believe I thought that was cool. That's how I feel about this whip. I can't believe I thought this was cool now that I'm not a whip expert by any means, but now that I'm more knowledgeable about whips, I can't believe I thought this whip was worth even $30. It's like the, the best thing I can think to do with it is just make like a decorative wall hanging or something with it because yeah, that's, it's just not going to do anything versus it's just, there's no comparison at all. So that's what I'm currently up to. I am hoping to get a bunch of whip making done tonight and I'm going to go actually cut some strands as soon as I cut this video. So I will catch you up on how that goes next time. Have a great night. Bye.